My last video on the Atari VCS was not the most positive video, and no other channels such as Review Tech USA, RGT85, and numerous others have been complaining a lot about this product. And really, looking back, I do think that the Atari VCS still has potential. It's just that they're not really showing what it can do right now. Well, at least that was the case, but after some time went by, people just started to stop talking about the Atari VCS. I mean, people still talk about it today and still post videos on it, but not as much as when it was in its earlier phase of development. So, I decided to look into the Atari VCS in September of 2018 and see where it is as of right now. And there's actually some new information that has come out about games and hardware. But before I get into that, I do have to say that this is going to be a as biased of a discussion as I can possibly be. I'm not going to share my opinions on this until the end. And until then, I'm going to try to be as least biased as possible. And I just want to talk about what's on my mind about what's going on about this too. But you're still going to hear about what's going on with the Atari VCS, its new hardware, its apparently confirmed games, and more. So let's start off with the hardware. I know it's not incredibly interesting, but we do have more information that may actually, if you are into computer hardware, may be interesting to you. So Atari has released some information on the on what the VCS is going to be able to do. And right now, we only have three pieces of information and they're not incredibly great looking right now, but I still want to talk about them because they are important. So Atari is going to be using a custom AMD development board, so when they say development board, I assume that this is not the final, of course none of this is the final product, but they might switch out the board later on, and it's mainly just like the title suggests, it's just made for development purposes. But what is more interesting than the board, which the board is actually not incredibly big, as Atari says, it's 18 inches wide, and something that is, I feel like I should mention though, is that we have information on the processor and the RAM. The VCS is sporting a Bristol Ridge processor and 8 gigabytes of RAM. So, to put that into comparison, if you don't know what that is, basically, for example, if you look at an Xbox One, the base Xbox One, that has a Jaguar CPU, so basically from the same company who makes this Bristol Ridge processor AMD, and also 8GB of RAM. Keep in mind though that the Xbox One, the base model, came in in 2013. But performance is not everything, so let's move on. So Atari is still working on their classic joystick and their modern controller, and they are getting into more collaborations, and I do think that those products are probably going to be pretty good. Just because the way that you look at them, they look so... they look very clean, and I do think that I would pick up those controllers and just connect it to my PC if I were to do maybe some emulators or something like that, and the modern controller doesn't look bad either. But as for games, we do have some new information. A lot of people, including myself, were kind of getting pretty pissed off at Atari for not really sh telling us what games we're going to see. And Atari was testing games, and they didn't optimize it yet, and they tested games such as Rocket League, Baseball Classics, Borderlands 2, Terraria, and others, which I'll link in the description. Being honest, if it can run all this, which, I, if it can run Rocket League, then I feel like that's going to be good enough for most games, I think, for what people really are going to want to buy this for. And I still think that performance-wise, while it may not be on par with something like the base Xbox One with the GPU especially, I still think you will be able to get some good experiences on this. Alright, so that's everything I have to really talk about on the hardware and software side. And if you do want to see more information, I'll have a link to the Medium article I got this from in the description, as well as the Indiegogo campaign. But now I want to talk about my opinions before I wrap this up. And being honest, the best way to sum it up is that I think it's, it's great we're seeing these games running on this system. The only problem is that the price just kills it. $300 for any console is about what you would expect when you're paying for the next generation. So the base model of your next generation console, the Xbox One, or not the Xbox One when it launched, but like the PS4 launched around that, Xbox One S launched around that, and 
while I do think that it's great that those consoles launch at that price and even cheaper now that time has gone on, this is not as powerful as those systems and it's not going to get the same support and this system should have launched at 150 I think 150 would have been a way more realistic price. 250 to 300 just does not seem, it just doesn't seem worth it when you compare what is also out there. What this needs in order for that price point to be justified is amazing hardware and amazing support. Like the, the greatest support we have seen in a very long time with companies exclusively jumping on board and developing games for this system that are really going to knock it out of the park. But the chance of that happening are just, they're really low. So in conclusion, in my opinion, I think that the VCS is right now, it's really crippled by the price. And if the price was cut, maybe it launched it when they change the price. Atari, the Atari VCS team, they launch it at 150, 200 around there. Then I feel like the VCS would have a way better fighting chance. But of course, that's my opinion. And if you have your own thoughts, please let me know them in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure to check out my social medias in the description. And as always, see you.